following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday to you, wherever you are. Ken Shreve with you. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. The number to use to get through is 877-927-6648. You can catch my show every Tuesday and Thursday on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen live, check out the podcast on iTunes. Very easy to do. And uh, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. In your smartphone browser, just type in tfnn.mobi, very short URL. Type that into your smartphone browser, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. If you want to look at uh, charts that I'm looking at on my program today, you can do that in Tiger TV, right on the homepage of tfnn.com. Uh, channel 1, the show is uh, live, and it's archived in Channel 13, and uh, Tiger TV is now viewable on your smartphone iPhone, Android device, whatever you have, you can uh, get a nice good picture on your uh, handheld phone watching Tiger TV. All right, well, bearish day for the market Tuesday. Saw some gains yesterday in light volume. More gains today. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of juice behind the uh, volume today either, but you know, a lot of good action out there. A lot of good action out there in individual uh, growth names. So let's take a look and see where we're at here. Starting with the NASDAQ composite, I'm going to just uh, refresh this chart, get an up-to-date quote, and then I will uh, grab it again here. We'll see that the NASDAQ composite trading Right at its session high, up 1.3%, almost 40 points, to 3,056. Uh, NASDAQ Composite came down to its 50-day moving average on Tuesday, pretty much closed right at the line, you can see there, and it has been in rally mode for uh, two days. So not much juice, though, not much juice. You can see it came down to its 50-day moving average, very heavy volume. Uh, volume was very light yesterday on the rebound and it looks like right now things don't change materially between now and the close NASDAQ volume is going to be probably about five percent lower than what we saw on Wednesday um, but uh, still holding above its 50-day moving average which is a uh, positive sign let's um, and uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the NASDAQ composite is that uh, the pullback from its uh, recent high has been um, from its high to its uh, recent low, 4.7%. Uh, pretty modest uh, pullback from its recent high for the NASDAQ composite. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 large cap index. Uh, this index actually fell below its 50-day moving average Tuesday in very heavy volume. It is now back above its 50-day line, up 18 points, 1.3% 1 to 1368. Uh, so pretty good price action in, uh, in that index as well. And let's take a look at the index that I'm really watching uh, the closest at this point. I'm really paying attention to the, to the composite, the S&P 500, and also the NASDAQ 100 because that's where a lot of leadership in the market is currently. You can see the NASDAQ composite is uh, still holding nicely above its 50-day moving average. Uh, it is up 1.2% today to 2711. Now we know that Apple makes up about 20% of the NASDAQ 100. After uh, Apple, you've got uh, Microsoft, the second highest weighted stock in the NASDAQ 100. And I believe below Microsoft is Google, which reports uh, earnings after the close uh, today. So, um, I, you know, my general take on things is that until the NASDAQ 100 uh, and this, this index has only corrected about 4% uh, off its recent highs. So between the composite, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100, you're looking at pullbacks from, from recent highs uh, up to this point that have been in the 4 to 5% uh, area. Fairly, uh, fairly modest. Um, I don't think the market is out of the woods yet, is my, my general take on things. Um, I think the risk still outweighs the reward in this market. I think that what uh, Google has to say after the close today is going to have uh, a pretty good say in uh, where we go tomorrow, either up or down. Uh, seems to be a lot of positive sentiment around Google's uh, report. They had a bad miss in the, fir uh, the fourth quarter when they last reported 
uh, earnings. Let's uh, go ahead and check in on Google while we're talking about it here because it, uh, it's having a pretty good day today ahead of the report. Uh, shares of Google up 2.2%, outperforming nicely to $649.86 uh, a share. There is a little bit of juice behind the uh, volume today, so obviously some optimism ahead of its uh, earnings report. You can see a swing point for Google, 658.59. 658.59 is going to be right here for, for Google. It is uh, right around 650 right now. So uh, if the market likes what Google has to say after the close, you could see a bona fide breakout here uh, over a swing point of 658.59. Uh, but it's really 50-50 at this point, right? Because, uh, hey, they could deliver a lackluster quarter and uh, and then the, the bottom uh, could could fall out here but uh, optimism in general seems to be there for for Google's earnings and overall I have to say you know expectations are are pretty low uh, when it comes to uh, first quarter uh, earnings season um, I remember Thomson Reuters uh, recently there was an article in Investors Business Daily that um, said that S&P 500 firms uh, overall are expected to grow first quarter earnings 3% uh, from the year ago quarter. That's down from an earlier estimate of 5.5% on January 1st and then back in the summer of 2011, which is quite quite a ways away, but the, the estimate at that time for first quarter earnings growth was 12.8%. So from 12.8% to 5.5% down to 3%. Um, Expectations are low. I do think there's a, a chance that we could see you know, no shortage of upside surprise. So ho hopefully Google will start things off on the uh, right foot uh, tomorrow. Uh, busy week of uh, earnings uh, next week is, as well. Lots of high-profile tech names uh, scheduled to report. We've got Intel on Tuesday, Intuitive Surgical also on Tuesday, hard disk drive maker Seagate on Tuesday, Yahoo, Qualcomm on Wednesday, VMware on Wednesday. It's really going to pick up the pace uh, next week. So uh, obviously, it's an ex it's it, it's a potential catalyst for the market. Uh, there's if you've been listening to my show in recent weeks, listen. Distribution is out there in the market. There's no question about it. We saw an unequivocal day of distribution in the market on Tuesday. And two two days of uh, gains Wednesday and uh, today, where there's just hasn't been a whole lot of uh, juice behind the the buying. So um, you know, I I'm encouraged by the action in several growth stocks uh, today. I'm encouraged by the fact that um, uh, Apple is uh, really not showing any signs of uh, breaking down. Let's check in check in on Apple here. And it is, you know, trading right at its 10-day moving average under some selling pressure for three days in a row. Looks like um, could get three straight days where Apple closes near its session low, but uh, uh, and not overwhelming volume to the downside. Apple is underperforming today, down four dollars and twenty cents, uh, almost seven tenths of a percent, to six hundred and twenty-two dollars uh, a share. If Apple, you know, breaks down. Uh, Technically, in a meaningful fashion, in coming days, uh, you know, obviously it's gonna it's gonna weigh on the uh, Nasdaq 100 and most likely the um, the broad market. So I think overall defense is still you know a good uh, a good posture to have uh, in this market. I've been uh, raising cash in the model portfolio. I nibbled at a stock today. Uh, because of uh, pretty pretty good price and volume trends, uh, and I may do that occasionally. Uh, but you know, when the risk outweighs the outweighs the reward, you don't want to be too aggressive when it comes to uh, when it comes to new buys. So uh, mentioned Apple still hanging in there pretty well. Um, you know, Intuitive Surgical, another Nasdaq 100 Titan, scheduled to report earnings uh, next week. Look at uh, ISRG outperforming broadly today, thirteen up thirteen dollars and forty one cents. Two and a half percent to five hundred and fifty-three dollars and forty-two cents. Uh, probably, you know, good chance you're going to see a big beat on the bottom line and top line from Intuitive Surgical uh, next week on Tuesday. Uh, of course, it's known for its Da Vinci robotic surgical system, very popular in uh, prostate cancer uh, surgeries and uh, things along uh, that line. So well-run company there. And uh, again, Google after the close today. Uh, take a look at some other story stocks uh, today.
take a look at Fusion IO, FIO. Fast growing company here. I still view it as technically a broken stock. When I do buy stocks for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio, I tend to buy uh, stocks showing relative price strength. Fusion IO, uh, FIO on the New York Stock Exchange is not in that boat. Uh, it has been hit pretty hard in recent weeks uh, by heavy volume selling, but to the stock's credit, it is up big today, $3.45, uh, almost 14% to 28.11. Uh, interesting note from uh, Piper Jaffrey today that the company could be close to an agreement with Cisco Systems uh, where Cisco would resell FIO products with some of its systems. Um, and uh, Fusion IO is a maker of uh, flash, uh, flash uh, memory, solid state memory, basically uh, helps uh, company companies uh, decentralize uh, data on their servers. But uh, really interesting technology from Fusion IO and uh, um you know, but this is not a stock that I would be uh, interested in buying right now. I, I like to buy stocks when they're coming out of consolidation areas. Fusion IO up big today, but not coming out of a uh, consolidation. Uh, mentioned volume in, in the market uh, right now. Yesterday on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, volume was right around average at 785 million shares. Uh, if things stay the way they are, we're probably going to come in about 5% lower than that on the New York Stock Exchange. On the NASDAQ yesterday, also below average at nearly 1.5 billion shares. Uh, same thing with the NASDAQ uh, volume right now, tracking about 5% uh, below the light levels that we saw on Wednesday. Uh, let's take a look at a big gainer today, TFM, the fresh market. Uh, they operate supermarkets, upscale specialty grocery stores. Uh, they have a, a big presence in the southeast, middle Atlantic states, uh, some in uh, New England as well. Uh, not out in California as far as I know where I'm uh, located, but a very well-run company here. Probably going to see 20% annual earnings growth over the next couple of years for the fresh market. And a big move for the stock today, up 4.6% to $51.87. You had a initial breakout over a swing point of 46.92. That was uh, back uh, back here in uh, looks like uh, January. Uh, the swing point here was 46.92. Uh, you had the uh, the breakout in March, and then perhaps an alternate buying area here cleared another swing point. Um, uh, today of uh, 49.85, 49.85. That would be a, a swing point right here. Uh, Two and a half billion dollar market cap here. Outstanding fundamentals, uh, fundamentals, outstanding technicals as well. So seeing a lot of strong action uh, like the fresh market uh, today, which is compelling. You know, it, that's the tricky thing about this market. You know, the bears can make a pretty good case. A lot of distribution in the market in recent weeks. Not overwhelming dis distribution, but enough to tread cautiously and then Tuesday you had you know some really heavy volume behind the the selling S&P 500 broke broke below its 50-day moving average Nasdaq composite barely held the line but the Nasdaq 100 held above it um, then you got names like uh, fresh market a lot of new no, other new issues that uh, we'll go over when we when we come back that are acting well uh, today as well so a lot of uh, compelling action below the surface today uh, two straight days of two straight days of uh, low volume gains though cause for a little bit of uh, concern just be careful out there folks as we head into first quarter earnings season we'll be back in about uh, three to four minutes break on investing on TFNN we'll be right back Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks.
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing Investing in broadly diversified funds distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master and i'll teach you how david white's newsletter the technology insider is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology if you had invested only ten thousand dollars in microsoft in 1986 you'd have been a millionaire by 2000 disruptive technology like microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the tech insider is the vehicle from tfnn to capitalize on these opportunities this is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. It was interesting before the market opened today, watching pre-market uh, trading. It looked like stocks were poised for a nicely higher open, and then we got a kind of a not so good reading on weekly jobless claims. They were expected to fall slightly to 355,000, but they actually rose uh, 13,000 to 380,000 and uh, index uh, pre-market futures gave back a lot of uh, early gains but uh, market so far today seems to be uh, shrugging that off maybe looking at it as a uh, one-off uh, perhaps like uh, last Friday's jobs report but sort of a disappointing reading in weekly uh, jobless claims, up 13,000 to 380,000 earlier today. Uh, the producer price index also came out uh, earlier this morning. This is the latest reading on wholesale inflation. Obviously, inflation is not a uh, paramount concern of the Federal Reserve right now. Probably more concerned about deflation than they are uh, inflation. But uh, overall, prices were flat versus expectations of a three-tenths of a percent rise. Uh, core rate up a little more than ex expected, but not uh, alarmingly so. Core prices, uh, which exclude food and energy, rose three-tenths of a percent versus uh, an estimate of a two-tenths of a percent rise. So uh, tomorrow we'll get the latest reading on consumer prices. I think that comes out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, overall, consumer prices expected to be up three-tenths of a percent with the core rate up two-tenths of a percent. Also tomorrow we've got the University of Michigan consumer confidence uh, reading for April. That'll be the first look at uh, consumer confidence for April from the uh, popular University of Michigan uh, survey earlier this week, uh, Investors Business Daily. And um, 
Technometrica. That's a polling uh, firm in uh, Washington, D.C., I believe. But uh, IBD tip came out with uh, the, actually the first reading on consumer confidence for the month of uh, April, and that uh, rose slightly. It's still in pessimistic territory, but the index uh, for April was uh, was up, which was um, a good a good sign. Taking a look at uh, crude oil, up nine tenths of a percent today to 103.64 a barrel. Seeing some interesting action in uh, an ETF that I follow in the oil and gas space. The uh, ticker is IEO. This is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Oil and Gas Exploration and Production Fund. Kind of a, a mouthful, but it targets uh, oil and gas uh, producers. You can see it's been under a lot of a lot of pressure in recent weeks. Uh, obviously, natural gas uh, prices weighing on a lot of these uh, E&P firms. But uh, IEO today outperforming nicely, up three percent to sixty-three dollars and twenty-four cents. A lot of uh, volume behind the move today too. So IEO making it uh, making a case that it has uh, put in a near-term bottom here. Uh, some top uh, weightings in IEO include Occidental Petroleum. Let's take a look at. Some some of how these large cap ENP firms are doing today. Occidental Petroleum um, up two and a half percent to ninety dollars and ninety nine cents. A lot of uh, technical damage uh, done here. Again, these are stocks that I personally would not be uh, looking at if you're a value investor. Uh, pretty good at buying stocks uh, near lows like this. Uh, there may be some opportunities here, um, but Occidental Petroleum having a good day today, up two and a half percent to ninety ninety nine. Another top holding of uh, IEO is uh, APC, which is Anadarko uh, Petroleum, and uh, a lot of these charts look uh, very similar. Anadarko up two point nine percent today to seventy six fifty, and uh, finally we can take a look at uh, Apache. That's A P A. Another oil and gas uh, producer and three very similar looking charts Apache up about 2.4 percent to 94.99 but uh, strong volume in the IEO uh, today after quite a bit of uh, selling pressure. Uh, taking a look at gold up 1.2 percent today to $1,680.60 an ounce. Uh, the dollar was weak that is uh, helping uh, lift gold prices. Uh, last check, the U.S. dollar index was down about 49 ticks to 79.30. Uh, you had uh, a couple of Fed members uh, earlier today. Uh, New York Fed uh, President uh, William Dudley said the economy isn't strong enough yet to make a significant dent in the unemployment rate. That's pretty much in line with with what uh, Ben Bernanke has been uh, saying. Uh, Dudley's remarks followed remarks uh, yesterday from Janet Yellen, the Fed's uh, second ranking. Uh, official uh, who also made the case for keeping interest rates low for some time. So um, some uh, you know dovish uh, Fed speak um, you know weaken the dollar today. That's helping stocks. It's also helping uh, gold prices as well. Let's take a look at the GLD popular gold ETF, the Spider Spider Gold. Trust. Okay, up 1.1% today to 162.84. Um, still technically damaged here, but hey, up three out of the fast four, but three out of the past four trading sessions, um, trying to start a uh, new uptrend. So we'll see what the future holds for the GLD. Uh, when we come back, folks, time to take a look at some um, some good movers during uh, today's session. We'll do that in about four minutes. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC, member SIPC. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, quick check on the markets with uh, about 25 minutes left to go in Thursday's session. Uh, indices holding gains uh, nicely, all up pretty much one and a quarter percent. Uh, volume still on the light side, tracking pretty close to the levels that we saw Wednesday, maybe about uh, five percent uh, lower. But the Dow right now up uh, 160 points, one and a quarter percent to 12,965, uh, trying to get back to that 13,000 level. The Nasdaq uh, also up one and a quarter percent, call it 30 eight points to 3,054 and the S&P 500 up one and a quarter percent 17 points to 13 85. Uh, let's check in on the uh, Financial Select Sector Spider Fund. This is uh, an ETF that uh, holds a lot of uh, financial stocks. Of course, it is uh, up 1.6% today to $15.45. Uh, has a similar looking chart to the NASDAQ composite in that it came right down to its 50-day moving average on, on Tuesday. Actually closed a little bit uh, below that uh, support level, but has been in rally mode uh, the past uh, couple of days. Again, the issue here here with the XLF is you do have some some distribution in the ETF and the past two gains kind of rallies in uh, light volume so that is uh, worth paying attention to but the two top holdings of XLF are Wells Fargo and JP Morgan Chase and they report earnings tomorrow uh, before the open so we'll have to see 
uh, how the XLF uh, responds and, of course, how JPM and Wells Fargo uh, respond to their earnings reports uh, before the open on uh, Friday. A couple of uh, new issues uh, started uh, trading today. Uh, not you know, widely known uh, companies here, and I don't have uh, charts for them, so I'll just go over uh, their names, and um, um, we will uh, see here uh, Forum Energy Technologies. That's uh, FET. FET, I believe, is the uh, ticker symbol there. And let's see if uh, see if I can. There, there it is. Forum Energy Technologies. I'll just uh, the chart's not going to show us much, but uh, this is uh, an interesting company, oil field products company. They raised uh, 379 million by offering 18.9 million shares at 20 dollars. That's at the high end of the proposed range of 18 to 20. Stocks having a pretty good day today, up a uh, dollar 85. Uh, call it uh, just over nine percent to 21.85. So nice uh, debut for Forum Energy Technologies ticker FET. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, MRC, which is MRC, MRC Global. Uh, this is uh, an equipment provider to the oil and gas uh, industry. They offered uh, 23 million shares at $21 uh, at the low end of a proposed range of 21 to 23. Kind of a lackluster day, down uh, 11 cents in its debut to 2089. So that's MRC. Uh, global ticker MRC and finally let's check in on Oak Tree Capital easy ticker symbol here O A K Oak Tree Capital Group uh, an alternative asset manager that focuses on uh, debt uh, they priced at $43 uh, again at the low end of a proposed range of 43 to 46 um, it was also a lower offering uh, than was initially expected. They had planned to offer 11.25 million shares, but they offered uh, 8.8 .8 million at uh, 43. Uh, the stock is also down 60 cents, uh, so a lukewarm debut for Oak Tree Capital Group, uh, trading around 42.40, down 60 cents. So, uh, fairly vi vibrant uh, IPO market here. I was going through my screens and really seeing a lot of. Um, a lot of positive uh, action in my ultimate growth stocks uh, model portfolio. LinkedIn is having a really solid day today. Um, looks like a possible breakout taking shape here. Stock is up uh, $8.63 today, 8.8% to 106.29. So uh, the swing point with uh, LNKD, uh, let me get that. I think it was at uh, 105 thereabouts. Let's see here. Uh, actually, it's 106.97. 106.97 is the swing point for uh, LinkedIn. That was its high uh, set right in this area here. But uh, stock is uh, outperforming nicely today, up near its session high, up 8.9% to 106.29. Uh, news here is that Morgan Stanley raised its uh, price target on LinkedIn to 115. Uh, so stock is uh, getting a bid as a result. LinkedIn, of course, went public almost uh, a year ago at $45 a share. Remember, it hit an intraday high of 122 on its first day of trading. Uh, but the stock uh, looks good here technically. Very um, uh, you know, real story of growth at, at LinkedIn. I've mentioned this uh, company on and off uh, on the on the show, and uh, you know, you've got some IPOs that have come out um, that have good top line growth, good sales growth, uh, but uh, they're not making money yet, and that's not the case with uh, with LinkedIn. Not only do they have uh, triple digit uh, sales growth for several quarters in a row, but uh, the company first turned its first profit in 2010, and it has been growing like gangbusters uh, ever since. It's expected to earn. 64 cents a share this year compared to 35 cents in 2011. That's growth of 83%. And then looking out next year, estimates are for annual earnings of $1.10, up 72% from 2012. So a uh, lot to like about uh, LinkedIn, and uh, stock is outperforming nicely uh, today. Let's uh, also take a look at S-A-V-E, Spirit Airlines. This is a, a discount airline, uh, also with a good fundamental and technical picture. Uh, Save is uh, outperforming today, up 2.3% to $21.15. Save went public um, in May. Uh, last year at $12 a share. And uh, again, another company that just has uh, shows good bottom line and top line growth in recent quarters. Uh, pretty good technical picture as, as well. So always good to see. Um, oops. Get that out of here. 
Um, always good to see uh, outperformance, um, outperformance like that. Looks like my laptop uh, is uh, about to run out of juice here. So, if it does, I may lose uh, these charts in uh, Tiger TV. But sorry for that uh, interruption there. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at um, uh, shares of uh, Fastenal ticker F A S T. Shares of uh, Fastenal under more pressure today. Okay, well, bear with me, folks. Just gonna plug in my computer here. Let's see if we can get this going again. That nah, doesn't uh, doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But uh, shares of uh, Fastenal under some uh, pressure today. It's a construction supply store operator. Earnings up uh, 26% to $0.34 cents a share. Sales up 20% to $768.9 uh, million. But, um, yeah, stock is under some pressure today. It uh, recently broke below its 50-day uh, moving average. So technically it's in uh, trouble. Really the first signs of institutional selling started to uh, pop up in uh, Fastenal uh, just earlier this month, around April 3rd when it started declining in, in heavy volume and it uh, broke below its um, broke below its 50-day uh, moving average on uh, on Tuesday so that is uh, shares of um, Fastenal just bear with me for a minute here folks Okay, moving on, taking a look at uh, shares of Tractor Supply. Uh, this stock is uh, also having a pretty good day today. Shares uh, up $5.49 uh, to $97.79. Huge volume in the stock today. Tosco operates uh, farming equipment stores. They pre-announced uh, first quarter earnings. Um, they don't report until April 25th, but the uh, company said that revenue was going to come in around $1 billion, uh, $1.02 billion to be uh, specific, versus uh, estimates for $937.4 million. It also sees first quarter earnings of 53 to $0.55 cents a share, far above uh, the estimate uh, for $0.32. Cents. So uh, shares of tractor supply uh, doing, uh, doing pretty well here. Okay, so that's uh, tractor supply. And then uh, also strong follow-through for uh, shares of Titan Machinery. Uh, yesterday, the company had uh, really, really solid earnings, but uh, let's check in on shares of uh, Titan and see how, uh, see how it is doing today. Shares of Titan Machinery up, gosh, another 10% today to 35.21. Uh, this is a company that operates farming equipment stores. Um, or agricultural construction equipment stores actually for Titan Machinery. Um, but they uh, yesterday reported profit of $0.84 cents a share, up 47% from a year ago, sales up 65% to $607 uh, million. Uh, nice breakout recently for Titan Machinery, over $28 and uh, the twenty-eight sixty-eight uh, price level. It is, um, it is extended here, so I would uh, hold off uh, I would hold off uh, buying it, but uh, excellent uh, day of performance for Titan. And a very similar uh, business, ironically, to uh, Tractor uh, Supply, which, uh, again, pre-announced uh, positive uh, earnings earlier today. Uh, moving on, take a look at shares of uh, Priceline. You know, Priceline uh, was a, a holding in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, and i got to tell you, I had no problems at all taking profits in that uh, stock yesterday. It was uh, uh, made a nice uh, run. Uh, it's up 12 bucks today to 741 dollars and 56 cents a share it's about a 1.6 percent gain uh, but I decided to take profits after a, a, a heavy volume decline on Tuesday and more uh, heavy volume selling in the stock uh, yesterday I decided to lock in a, a, a nice gain. I was in uh, in that one around five hundred and forty five dollars a share so I just uh, you know held on to it and don't normally like to sell my leaders, but uh, Priceline has just made such a, a massive uh, price move. It did come down to its 20-day moving average today, and uh, it's finding support for now. But um, uh, I never look back on my decision to sell a stock. I kind of I make my uh, sell decisions uh, based on you know what price and volume trends in a stock uh, tell me uh, what to do, and that's why I took profits. Um, 
uh, yesterday in uh, Priceline. They're going to be coming out with earnings uh, in early May. Not a uh, not a official earnings date yet, but it should be on or around May 3rd. Uh, earnings at Priceline expected to be up 47% to $3.92 a share. Sales up 28% to one point. Oh four uh, billion, pretty impressive growth for a company with a market cap of close to twenty seven billion. Um, also checking in on CF Industries here. CF uh, Industries. Well, it's one of these days when all of my all of my tools are just not uh, working for me. But um, let's see what we got here. Try and get a quote for CF Industries. Yeah, having a, a good day up close to 4% today to 189.03. 189.03 uh, for CF Industries. Uh, this is uh, a company that is approaching a swing point of 195.48. CF Industries uh, makes nitrogen and phosphate uh, fertilizers. But uh, potential technical breakout uh, taking shape here. So CF Industries, one to uh, keep an eye on. And also uh, Polaris uh, Industries, P-I-I. Uh, this is a name we've talked about on the show. Polaris uh, Industries makes uh, snowmobiles. They make all-terrain recreational utility vehicles. Earnings are due April 18th. Another good quarter is uh, expected. Polaris is another one of these growth names that um, you know just delivers consistent growth quarter after quarter. That is a, a focal point of, of how I choose stocks for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio. You have to have the... Um, Earnings and sales growth in recent quarters, but uh, earnings at Polaris uh, expected to be up 15% to 77 cents a share. Sales up 14% to 612.5 million. So shares of uh, Polaris uh, doing uh, doing pretty well today. Up. 3.3% to 72.51. So that's shares of uh, Polaris. And then I did a video uh, earlier this week, another drug maker that I'm uh, taking a look at for my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model portfolio. It's on my watch list, uh, just kind of watching it for now, waiting for volume to come into the stock because volume has been very light for several weeks now. But high quality company. Um, uh, and it's uh, called Valiant uh, Pharmaceuticals. They make drugs uh, sent to treat central nervous system disorders, uh, pain, skin conditions. Uh, it's also outperforming today, up 2.3%. I don't think volume's uh, too heavy today, but uh, it's recently trading around 53.74, uh, and really waiting for this one to move over 55 bucks a share. And if I can get a good volume pop, I, I think shares might be uh, worth uh, a nibble. So Valiant uh, Pharmaceuticals, VRX, on my watch list as well. And... Um, since uh, Google is reporting earnings after the, the close today, I wanted to take a look at another um, uh, another new issue company that uh, recently came public. Again, approaching its one-year anniversary as a public company, uh, shares of Yandex, Y-N-D-X, shares of uh, Yandex. Uh, in an interesting uh, technical setup, this is a name that has been under a lot of accumulation, a lot of heavy volume uh, price gains um, in recent weeks. Um, you have Google uh, reporting earnings after the close today, big search uh, search provider. Um, you've got Baidu in China that does pretty much what Google does in the U.S. And then in Russia, you've got Yandex. And that is, again, ticker YNDX came public in May at 25 bucks a share. Big growth at uh, Yandex and um, pretty pretty decent technical setup as well. Could try to clear a swing point of 28.14 uh, shares we're recently trading around 26.62, up 1.4%. So keeping an eye on Yandex here. Earnings are due April 26. Okay, folks, I'm going to try to get my laptop situation sorted out here, and I hope I can do that within four minutes when we come back. You're listening to Break and Investing on TFNN. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you 
once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Folks, turns out my best student became my best teacher. Steve Rhodes absolutely raised my standards, and I'll guarantee he'll raise yours. Thanks, Tom. What I've learned is that if you want more, you must become more, and that transformation, folks, that occurs the moment you decide to become a master. Now, the quickest way to mastery is through immersion, and for two solid days in Denver, Boston, and Tampa, I'll create a new standard of wealth for those few trader investors who have a burning desire to succeed. At my Master Trader course, I'll teach you how to create the ultimate money machine. These are the best kept secrets in the business. Roadblocks, folks. Dabblers give up when they first appear. Stressors last just a little bit longer, but masters expect roadblocks and achieve extraordinary results when they bust right through them. I have all the benefit of knowing the type of wealth creation that I can generate for you. You don't. That's why I'm making this unconditional money back guarantee. If for any reason you're not satisfied with my master trader course, I'll refund every penny. That's right. I take all the risk and you get all the benefit. Go to the homepage at tfn.com and sign up today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave method to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your the Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, to uh, Breakout Investing on TFNN. And uh, during the break, uh, well, I've been doing the show for so long, it's the first time I've had a, a piece of uh, equipment uh, die on me. But uh, you know what? I think I'm back in shape here, and I'll let my producer uh, communicate with me on IM to see if uh, we're seeing that uh, chart of the NASDAQ uh, composite. It should be, should be working now. For those of you watching on uh, on Tiger uh, TV, but uh, some of the stocks I was talking about before we uh, went to break, I wanted to take a look at uh, to CF Industries here. Pull that up because I couldn't uh, during the last segment, but uh, shares of CF Industries uh, up. 
3.8% now to 188.84. And there is a, a swing point here uh, for CF Industries, again, at uh, 195.48. And I just wanted to take a look at a monthly chart for CF Industries because it provides a good perspective. And this uh, this name really could be on the verge of a, of a breakout here if the market um, uh, cooperates. But here's the, the, the monthly chart. Here is the, uh, the base that started right here. And then you see just tight sideways movement here. So watching CF Industries to see if it can break out over 194.48, uh, the more volume there is, uh, the better. So CF uh, Industries uh, acting pretty well. And uh, again, let's take a look at uh, Valiant Pharmaceuticals. This is the drug maker we were talking about before we went to break. Let's take a look at a chart here. Uh, this is another uh, interesting name. Uh, just watching to see if it can break out with uh, conviction over the $55 uh, price level. So came down to its 50-day moving average uh, earlier this week, uh, enjoying a nice bounce today, up 2.4% to uh, 5377. Uh, finally, just wanted to take a look at uh, another. Uh, interesting name that I don't know that I've talked about. When I'm, I'm talking about uh, gaming and Macau, uh, typically talk about Win Resorts, Las Vegas Sands. Let's take a look at Melco Crown Entertainment, MPEL, on the uh, NASDAQ. Stock is up uh, close to 3% today, uh, trading off its highs, but still up 3% to 1407. Uh, Melco is, um, or Melco, I should say, is another. Uh, breakout candidate here over a swing point of fourteen dollars and twenty six cents. It uh, hit a h intraday high of fourteen thirty eight today, but this is uh, an interesting uh, setup as well. Uh, good fund fundamentals at Melco Crown Entertainment. Uh, earnings aren't due until mid May, but they're expected to earn fifteen cents a share versus a penny earned in the year ago quarter. So big earnings growth expected. Sales up. Uh, 24% to 997.4 million. So they're a big player in Macau as uh, as well. Probably the leader in the group right now is Las Vegas Sands. Let's check in on each of those stocks. Uh, LVS, um, really the strongest price performer in the group uh, at this point. Uh, LVS is up uh, eight tenths of a percent today to $61 a share, trading near its uh, session low after early strength. And then Wynn Resorts has uh, come up come upon some hard times um, recently. Not uh, not totally ugly, but uh, has been a, a bit of a laggard stock. Shares of Wynn uh, outperforming a little bit today, up 1.6% to 126.29. Folks, uh, don't forget if you want to uh, check out a free trial to uh, Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can get it 30 days uh, free at TFNN. Just uh, uh, click the newsletter uh, tab on the home page, then click on investment newsletters, or you can go right to my information page at tfnn.com by uh, going to kenshreve.com. Kenshreve.com will take you uh, uh, to an area where you can get a 30-day uh, free trial. Just click on the green banner. Can't miss it right on the home page of um, kenshreve.com. So, uh, okay. Hey, it's all about uh, earnings from Google after the close. Uh, earnings expected to be up 19% to 964 a share. Sales up 24% to 8.1 billion. That 8.1 billion is excluding traffic acquisition costs. Also interested to hear what J.B. Hunt Transport Services, JBHT, has to say after the close today. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show, 4 to 6 Eastern. I'll see you back here next Tuesday with another edition of Breakout Investing. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total